On September the 29th, China and Japan marked their 45th anniversary of restoring diplomatic ties. The two countries are now major economic powers and also trade partners. Yet, many issues going back to the wartime era continue to create barriers between them. So, why such tensions remain? What role do government policies play? Are the increasing numbers of tourists crossing between the two nations smoothing relations? To talk about these, I'm joined in the studio by Professor Xun Li from the University of International Business and Economics and Victor Gautrikai, Director of the China National Association for International Studies. We will also be talking to Professor Takasato Watanabe at Doshisha University, by Sutlet. That's our topic. This is Starlock. I'm Zoe. Before we get started, let's take a look at this. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe reaffirmed their readiness to strengthen cooperation between the two countries on the sidelines of July's G20 summit in Germany. President Xi said the four political documents and the four-point agreement serve as the guiding principle of bilateral ties on properly handling historical issues. At the invitation of Premier Zhou Enlai, Japanese Prime Minister Kakuei Tanaka visited China in 1972. The two countries issued a joint communique that read: "The Japanese side is keenly conscious of the responsibility for the serious damage that Japan caused in the past to the Chinese people through war, and deeply reproaches itself. The Chinese side expresses its welcome." In August 1978, foreign ministers of the two countries declared that neither side should seek hegemony in the Asia-Pacific region or in any other regions, and that each was opposed to efforts by any other country or group of countries to establish such hegemony. As then Vice Premier Deng Xiaoping noted, the China-Japan Treaty of Peace and Friendship is a continuation and development of the joint statement of 1972 between the Chinese and Japanese governments and of the normalization of Sino-Japanese diplomatic relations. In 1998, then Chinese President Jiang Zemin made the first official visit to Japan by a Chinese leader and held an intensive exchange of views with Japanese Prime Minister Keizo Uchiha. The two countries agreed that both sides stressed the importance of the ultimate elimination of nuclear weapons and opposed the proliferation of nuclear weapons in any form whatsoever. During his state visit to Japan in 2008, Chinese President Hu Jintao held talks with Japanese Prime Minister Yasuo Fukuda. They reached a board agreement on promoting a strategic relationship of mutual benefit. A joint statement said the two sides are determined to face history to ensure that the growth of China-Japan relations conforms the global development trend. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi made a four-point requirement on improving bilateral ties in 2014 in a meeting with his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida in Beijing. Wang urged the Japanese side to stick to the four China-Japan joint statements. He added that the two countries are each other's cooperative partners rather than threats. That the two sides should enhance equal-footed and pragmatic cooperation in terms of economic exchange, and should also respect each other's legitimate interests and concerns in terms of regional and international affairs. And that's what we've been through、uh, Sino-Japan relations over the past decades. Japan and China. Normalized their relations in 1972, but that was then. It was time of Cold War. Back then, Soviet Union against the United States. It seems Japan and China were the wingmen of the two major powers. But now things have changed. It seems the major rivalry between the world is still between the United States and China. So, what the change of geopolitics changed the relations between China and Japan, Victor? I would say,、uh, in the longer term, China and Japan have no other choice but become. Very close partners and friends with each other. Now, in the short term, of course, there are some differences of opinion. There are some differences in their strategic visions for each other. I would say, and I think it's more or less natural for Japan to be overtaken by China in 2010、mm. as the second largest economy in the world. Uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, problems in Japan to readjust. To its current status on the global stage, and also, I would say, even after decades of、uh, experiences after the end of the Second World War,、uh, Japan is still very much held、uh, captive by the United States,、uh, at least on the geopolitical side. So, I think, from the Chinese perspective, we need to know the reality that Japan is faced with, but we also need to emphasize the point to Japan that、uh, they need to really come to terms with the reality of the Second World War and really. Cut off any kind of association with the Japanese fascism in the Second World War, and really have enough courage to face forward to the future.、Mm. On that basis, I think 
Japan-China relations have all the reason to be stronger and stronger, and both the Chinese people and the Japanese people will benefit from closer cooperation and partnership between so, China and Japan. So there is both change in geopolitics and the size of economy that have bearings on the relations between China and Japan. But which one is more important for the change of tone? Mm. It is obvious that the United States may be the most important external determinants for China-Japan uh, relations. Mm. However, uh, maybe uh, it is very easy for us to think that uh, the deterioration of one bilateral relation such as uh, China-U.S. relations may be uh, good for improvement of U.S.-Japan alliance. Mm. However, uh, there should no there should not be some rivalry between such bilateral relations, uh, including China-U.S. relations, China-Japan relations, and U.S.-Japan relations. That means all these three bilateral relations can enhance each other because uh, among all the three countries, there should be some common sense, some common interests, mm -hmm. and uh, such as peace and prosperity in the region and over the globe may be beneficial for all the three countries. But, but the problem is, it seems to pan reading is that the growth of China poses a big problem, a challenge at least to Japan's status in East Asia. And that's why there are a lot of problems between the two. Yeah, first of all, uh, whether the continued growth of China will be a problem for Japan or not, uh, that's a question that the Japanese need to face up with. Secondly, regardless of whatever their opinion may be, China will continue to grow. China is almost three times as big as the Japanese economy already. Mm -hmm. And I would say in the coming decades, in my own calculation, China at the peak of the development may be about six times as big as the Japanese economy. And mm -hmm. that's the big mega trend that we all need to face up and accept. And Japan is not an exception. I would say on that basis, a growing China, a further larger and stronger Chinese economy may actually turn out to be a benefit for Japan because mm -hmm. it will create all the business opportunities and it can help Japan's economy to grow faster. But it's why, not why absolutely is that, a bad thing. Why isn't that sentiment the prevalent, prevalent sentiment in at least among the circles of the Japanese politicians. Yes, I, I would say Japan as a whole is suffering from a split personality right now. Uh, in terms of their strategic political relations, they have no other choice but to be a strong ally of the United, United States. States. However, facing the rising of China, uh, China becomes stronger and stronger, larger and larger as an economy, and Japan need to really find a way to further engage with China in order to get all the economic benefits. Mm. So they need to make a choice as to whether they can strike for a balance in leaning towards the United States geopolitically speaking, but leaning more and more toward China polit uh, economically speaking. There must be a better way to strike a balance uh -huh. and Japan will need all the and, wisdom and to Mr. do Shung, that. And Mr. do you think going down the road with China's economy growing larger mm. in relative comparison with Japan, is it more difficult to keep such kind of balance or easier for Japan? Uh, in fact, uh, I do not think uh, whether it can keep the balance is the problem for the Japanese. In fact, uh, whether China's rise as an economic power or political power for Japan, is it a threat or opportunity? There are still no sure answer, no certain answer in Japan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but what can be certain is that uh, whether China will be a threat or an opportunity for, for Japan depends on uh, the situation of the bilateral but, relations. But, but a yeah. challenge or yeah. an opportunity depends on which area you're talking about. Since in the area of the security, they regard China as a threat. In the field of the economy, at least they think it is both an opportunity and a challenge. Mm. But economic uh, issue cannot be certainly an, a solution to political disputes. That means uh, economic relations between the two countries may more or less be helpful for the bilateral relations. But the economic uh, connection between the two, two countries cannot surely to be all of the solution to the dispute between the two countries. Mm -hmm. That means uh, uh, economic uh, relations may be hopeful, may be helpful, but we cannot depend all our uh, future. Uh, our future cannot depend entirely on economic connection between mm -hmm. the two countries. We should have more political cooperation. And how, how much is it to yeah. do with the politicians' thinking and philosophy? It seems. 
President Xi and Prime Minister Abe have been enjoying a workable relationship. It's not very warm. It's not that hostile. But it's not like Abe was, uh, for example, Prime Minister Modi. They can beg hug each other, and not like Donald Trump, which Abe has visited several times. How would you describe the re relationship between Prime Minister Abe and President Xi? I think it's a workable relationship, and hopefully it can be uh, further improved in the coming months and coming years. On the other hand, I would say uh, the Japanese politicians and the Japanese nation as a whole can benefit themselves by looking back at more than 2,000 years of exchanges between China and Japan, and China has never posed a threat to Japan, mm. uh, except probably during the Kublai Khan period when uh, China was under Mongolian uh -huh. rule. Uh, other than that, I think, uh, for all these thousands of years of uh, relations uh, between China and Japan. China has not been a threat to Japan and China-Japan relations more or less have been very very uh, peaceful and harmonious uh, except for about 50 during years the second world war. during the Second World War and, and that gives reason for hope that China and Japan mm. can get along mm. and for mutual benefit and the Japanese politicians... Because we have been getting along for quite some long time. Well, that's right. yeah, exactly. Uh, let's get some Japanese perspective and now we have uh, Mr. Watanabe from Doshisha University on the line. Uh, Mr. Watanabe, we've been talking about how Japan look at China's growth. This is a major problem, uh, probably a pivotal question uh, that the Japanese has to face in order to have a, a good relations with China. Have the Japanese views towards China changed, and how has that change affected its policies towards China? Uh, for the past 45 years, since the renormalization of relations of diplomacy, uh, Japanese views about China and Chinese have been very much changing, mm. and it is becoming better and better, especially among young people. But the senior people are divided into two parts. The, the, the one is remembering still what they have done and what they have not done in mainland China. And the, the other, they admit the historical facts and they are, they are very sorry for the Chinese people to, to become the hindering you see, function of the development of China. So these, you see, the former one is supporting Mr. Abe uh -huh. and his administration. Yeah, and the uh, latter one, they want to change the relations between China and Japan on the basis of core development. However, the Japan, Mr. Abe's administration is paying attention to the military part of North Korea and United States. So uh, Mr. Abe is, and also he is from the family of the Mr. Sato Tanaka and Mr. Kishi, mm. former two prime ministers. But Kishi his political view has been popular, pretty popular, especially in recent time, considering the, the North Korean nuclear crisis. It seems that he's riding yeah. on that popularity. You see, uh, <coughs> the. Some parts of the Japan said they don't like to be blamed, and so they are not given the right you see, facts and information about the war, what the military people of Japan have been doing or have done. And in addition, Mr. Abe's uncle is Mr. Sato, who was against China and admitted only Taiwan as a country. And his grandfather was Kishi, mm -hmm. who was occupying Manchuria area, you know. So, Mr. Abe cannot know the facts of the history, and he doesn't want to admit the facts of the history. Mm -hmm. So, these things are hindering the healthy, you see, the relations between but the two countries. But do you think his uh, philosophy, philosophies will evolve with the time? Because it seems that he is politically secure, at least for now, and he visited the Chinese embassy uh, just uh, yesterday uh, to mark the 45th anniversary of diplomatic relations. Do you think he will become softer towards China to tone down the rhetorics in the latter half of his 
Yeah, ten he, yeah. Yes, he, yeah, he must do like that because there are two things. One is that China is getting greater and greater in the global world, in the global scene. Second one is the, uh, the other party in Japan, now they are in the preparing for the uh, snap election. The Mrs. Miss Koike's party of the hope, mm. she has the similar idea to the Mr. Abe. So Mr. Abe has to be changing his own impression among J Japanese people. So he has to change the image of himself for the time being, but he doesn't understand mm. the historical facts because his father and his uncle mm. and his grand grandfather. These are the serious things, I think. Okay. Uh, we'll take a short break uh, with the Nanamabi and also uh, Victor and Mr. Xiong. Later on, we'll be talking about what is in the way of further uh, improvement of ties between the two major powers in East Asia. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Uh, there are several issues that might be in the way for good relations between China and Japan. First of all, is history. Uh, the other thing is the uh, probably the revision of the pacifist constitution and the economic relations. Let's talk about history first. Uh, it seems there is tacit agreement between the two sides. Uh, Abe will not visit the Yasukuni shrine, and China will not put that question front and center. Is, is that something that we, we can see in the future? No, I think between China and Japan, uh, they can do much better than that. I think uh, in the world today, for anyone really try to hide uh, behind their own illusions and try to pretend what happened in the Second World War uh, for the Japanese uh, aggressors to commit all these crimes and atrocities, it's kind of indulging in a fantasy. I think it will be in Japan's own benefit if they face up uh, with uh, what happened in the Second World War and really sever whatever associations there might still be with the past and face bravely uh, looking forward into the future like what the Germans have done since the end of the Second World War and that will create but a I much better foundation for, for China Abe US to relations. Get rid of his uh, view on history. Is it possible because he is the grandson like uh, with Nabe said, uh, uh, of a wartime general in, in the Second World War. He had that ossified philosophy about history. Mm. Uh, frankly speaking, yeah, just as you have said, it is very hard for me to believe that uh, Mr. Abe can change his view, his opinion on his talk issue completely. However, he may restrain his words and behavior, such as pay... Like not visiting Yasukuni. Yeah, 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 just... But he may keep his uh, real view in, uh, in his heart. Yeah, mm -hmm. just uh, keep it at the bottom of his heart. Yeah. Uh, another issue is, of course, the revision of the pacifist constitution. Uh, with the Watanabe, it seems that Abe is uh, bent on pushing for that uh, constitutional change. Will that happen when he wins the next uh, snap election in Japan? Yes, he actually wants to change the uh, clause 9, putting one phrase saying that Japan self-defense forces can fight against others when it is necessary, like that. So uh, this is very nat natural for us to imagine that he want to change that, that clause when he gets an uh, overwhelming victory. But it is not so easy for him to uh, change it because so many Japanese are against to changing it. J Japanese people are put into two part of the society, the difference between the rich and poor is mm. getting is bigger and bigger. And main concern of the Japanese people are the consumption tax hike, mm. that economic problem. And so uh, Abe cannot say loudly with a big bo voice that we have to change but the will he have enough political support within the diet uh, to push for this agenda? What is the position of the party of hope, uh, Yuriko Koiki, will she support that agenda? Yes. Uh, Koike, she doesn't want to put that agenda about the 
clause 9 of the Constitution. She want to touch upon other parts of the Constitution saying that local government should have more power like that. So uh, the, the she want to change the some parts of the Constitution, but Abe and, and Koike is so much different in the understanding what parts of the Constitution wrong. Mm. So they are different. And, 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 the, new party, and the new party of the hope uh, with Koiko at the, at the reign, will that change the political landscape and the agendas of Japan I I in the few years uh, to come? Yes, Koike's party want to give the strong I impression about two points. The first one is that the economic policy not to postpone the uh, consumption tax uh, hike. Second one is that we don't need to have nuclear, you see, uh, plantation for the electricity. But and foreign so policy-wise, they, they are similar. The yes, yes. And there's some parts of the Japanese want to be very emotionally influenced because the, uh, Mr. Abe has been talking about the good things, but the, he has not realized anything on the economy, mm. on the uh, military things, on the solution of North Korean problems like that. Mm. So, but Mrs. Koike, Miss, Miss Koike is so good at having the, her opinions out to the people emotionally. So, so, so it seems the that people the politicians really of Japan uh, realize the importance of economy uh, for their agendas. Do you think uh, the relations between China and Japan, both our largest trading partner, our uh, second largest trading partner for China, uh, do you think the trade relations will suffer because of foreign policy changes, politicians' attitudes? How important is economy for Japan? You see, even if anybody becomes the uh, prime minister, uh, we must uh, see, respect the existence of China and the power, economic power, military power of China. Mm -hmm. So anybody cannot deny that. However, the, in case of Mr. Abe, uh, the economic relations with China doesn't come first. Uh, in the idea of Mr. Abe, relations with United States comes, comes first. first. He follows every yeah. He follows everything, Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Koike or other party, they know that China is great. China is important, and also built and road idea of China, including you see Asian countries mm -hmm. is very very good idea. Uh, Victor, it, it seems that both China and Japan realize the importance of bilateral economic relations. They don't want this to suffer because of the sum of the distrust between the two governments. There is some mistrust at uh, the top level uh, between the two governments, uh, between China and Japan. However, I think real statesmen, and I hope uh, Mr. Abe will eventually become one of that, uh, will rise up above these differences and really see what is the, in the best interest of the Chinese people, what is in the best interest of the Japanese people and do the right thing mm. for Japan uh, not to fully engage with China on an equal basis with full respect between China and Japan may not be the right thing. I think Prime Minister Abe but can do much better to fully engage with China as a partner. But Mr. Shun, do you, do you think the change of leverage, economic leverage of China mm -hmm. will persuade Japan to think again when it prioritizes security alliances and economic partnership? Because uh, the United States drew out of the TPP, which is very important for Japan. Mm -hmm. Japan is heavily reliant on China's economic relations. The politicians must think to calculate which one is more important. Mm. I can only say, according to present situation, uh, the economic leverage of China can more or less help Japan to turn to pay more attention to the bilateral relations between China and Japan. Uh, however, uh, we cannot be too hopeful for this uh, because of the importance of U.S.-Japan alliance is also uh, still the foundation of Japan's foreign policy mm. in the short term, in anticipated future. A and the reason North Korea. Uh, nuclear crisis has made Japan, Japanese maybe realize mm. that 
yeah, more yeah, 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 yeah. Moreover, the so-called DPRK threat in Japan. And that's why uh, Prime Minister Abe has been enjoying an uh, increasing spike in poll numbers mm. because of his handling of the North Korean mm, crisis. Mm, mm. Maybe that's the most important reason for Mr. Abe's popularity nowadays in Japan, especially in the past one month, uh, because uh, as to the domestic issues, there is still over half of the pub, uh, public opinion still disfavor Mr. Abe's policy, such as economic issues and the social safeguards issues. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Victor, uh, it seems that lying beneath all these is the two nations and the two peoples thinking about each other. There are poles, uh, different poles. It seems that the Japanese and Chinese view of each other has been, for the most part, negative. Although there are increasing numbers of Chinese visiting Japan and also Japanese visiting China. Why is that? No, first of all, I'm not uh, alarmed by that. I think uh, the public opinions can change relatively quickly uh, given the uh, happening of certain events. And between China and Japan, uh, let's look at the mega trend. That is, these two countries have to live with each other. They are neighbors. They cannot get away from each other. Mm. And uh, uh, there are problems we need to deal with in the longer term. There is no other choice for Japan and China but to become closer friends and closer partners. Let's focus on this mega trend and then let's deal with whatever problems there are uh, at present. I, I want to get Mr. Watanabe's view on this. Do you think the Japanese and the Chinese can be friendlier uh, with knowing each other better? Yes, we should be. We should be. But uh, you see, as far as I have studied on this subject, Japanese and also Chinese, they don't agree in the understanding of the historical past. They don't. Because, Jap yeah, th this is the first you see, item. And the second one is the, in case of Germany, all the people, all the government politicians, they admit that Hit Hitler's policies were wrong. But in Japan, the, some parts of the society, they think that we did good things even in Korea and mm. also in China. This is completely wrong, but even Mr. Abe sometimes say like that. And Mr. Abe went to Yasukuni Shrine, and still now he is giving gifts to the Yasukuni Shrine yeah. on the uh, 15th of August. So this is so complicated. Uh, he pretends to be pacifist, but actually he doesn't know what you see, Japanese military circle did in China. Mm. So this is a, is a problem. Okay, and to get wisdom and insights, probably we should visit history more. And thank you very much, Mr. Matanabe, and also Victor and Mr. Xiong for your analysis and insights. And you've been watching Dialogue on CGTN. I'm Zorin Beijing. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.